Good morning. This is the audio lecture for chapters two through eight. It involves critical thinking and the nursing process. As a nurse, critical thinking is very important. It's not going to make any difference as to what area of nursing you decide to go into or what you consider as part of your nursing in everyday life you will have to be able to do critical thinking and you will have to apply the nursing process so in your reading and studying the chapters make sure when you read you read for understanding and you read for knowledge and you read that you can be able to implement what you read and understand in your knowledge if you read and you don't understand it and not able to implement it and put it into practice, you're not going to be able to, to critically think what you need to do. Critical thinking has many definitions, and you can see those on page uh, in, your, in your textbook. They're in a box on page 31. But critical thinking is so important that you may uh, wonder why you would need critical thinking. Well, critical thinking is the art of thinking about your thinking while you are thinking in order to make your thinking better, more clear, more accurate, and more defensible. And that is to say that when you think about something, you're going to have to put it into action swiftly because once you start your nursing career or anything, when you assess a situation, you got to have that knowledge to be able to take that knowledge and implement it. Now, they have a scenario in your book uh, called the, uh, on page 29. And it's just think uh it's just something for you to think about um exploring your nursing role because many individuals uh choose nursing as a career for various reasons. But note that uh whatever the reason are, you still are gonna have to have some concept of uh critical thinking and you're gonna use the nursing process and you're gonna also be using Maslow hierarchy of needs. Now, we will be going over masks, Maslow needs uh, shortly. But for now, I want you all to get a clear understanding of what it is and the process of uh, right now for critical thinking. Because once you establish critical thinking, you will be able to effectively use the nursing process in a manner that you normally wouldn't think about. And it gives an example in your textbooks also as critical thinking. It says, for example, you need to know critical thinking to add two plus two and come up with the answer. You simply need to know and follow the rules of addition. However, you do need to critical think to work through the important decisions and those in which the best answer is not so clear. Should I buy a new car or use one? So you're going to think about what would be best and what would be most appropriate during that situation will determine which, whether you buy the new car or used car. And critical thinking is a combination of reasonable thinking, openness to alternates, and the ability to reflect and to and a desire to seek the truth okay so some of the areas that you pull your critical thinking from would be areas of evidence-based practice and when we talk about evidence-based practice that was in chapter one if you want to read it so your evidence and what you come up on is they we consider that as best practice Okay, these are theorists, these are scientists, individuals that have done research in the area and they come up with a conclusion 
as to what would be best practice for an event. Safety is one of uh, a major concern in healthcare and in just in everyday life. Because if you think about it, uh, safety being a priority, look at what's going on today with COVID-19. What, what, what do they state as best practice? They state the best practice is six feet apart, social distancing, and wearing a mask. Now, why do we wear, why do they say wear a mask? Why do they say stay six feet apart? Okay, so if you think for a minute, you're going to you see that's part of critical thinking out what you want to do. Because you could choose to say, well, I don't want to wear a mask and I don't, and I'm not going to be six distant from someone. That is your choice. But based on the evidence, they're telling you to stay safe. This is your best practice. So if you're not using best practice in nursing for your patient, then you're not being a good representation of the nursing field and you're not really being an advocate for your patient and that's one of the main goals and we're going to talk about that later on in the semester that one of the major nursing roles is to be an advocate because you that person is depending on you to take care of them just as well if you have children they are depending on you to take care of them you're going to use best practice with them because of what you have been taught. You have been taught during own research that you cannot allow a two-year-old to be in a room playing with the electrical outlet. So you made a decision not, you know, not to plug it up or put a safety uh, guard in that uh, socket, and the child sticks something in there and be become electrocuted, then you have failed to follow the guidelines that have been set before you because you have been instructed that a two-year-old is not capable of making a decision about electrical outlets. So this is a safety measure that's been put in place. So everything that you do in nursing has a reason. So when you're studying and when you're reading, make sure that you read for understanding and know why you're doing what you're doing. If someone falls, you're going to assess the situation first before you just arbitrarily just jump in there and just swiftly pick them up. Because you, you really need to assess the situation and make sure that the patient is going to be able to stand up uh, when you get them up, that they're going to be able to be able to stand erect and not fall back down. Because if they are paralyzed, they're going to fall back down. If they, you know, if they hit their head, they're going to have a concussion. They're going to stagger. They're going to fall again. So you're going to have to critically think out every situation and everything that goes on. So once again, when you're studying, you need to make sure that you read and read and reread and then test yourself test your knowledge of what you have read say to yourself what does this mean break it down if you come to a word that you do not know and do not understand please define that word define that word and if if you read one definition and you don't understand it look it up define the definition until you can make sense of it because until you can make sense of something when you read it's not going to be mean for you meaningful for you and you're not going to be able to implement it if i say to you go in and take a person blood pressure and i ask you why are you taking that patient blood pressure let's just say the patient asks you said what is my blood pressure and you said 120 over 80, and they say, what does that mean? What, okay, as a nurse, what are you going to tell this patient? You will need to know what you are doing and why you are doing and the consequences of it. 
because they may say, well, you can say, well, 120 is the systolic, 8 is the diastolic. If they ask you, what is what is systolic? What are you going to tell them? If they ask you, what is diastolic? What are you going to tell them? If they ask you, is there a difference between systolic and diastolic? What are you going to tell them? So you need to know what you are doing, why you are doing it, and what the results will yield. That's critical thinking. And then you're going to be using the nursing process, and we're going to get into this in a little bit. And that's the way you need to study nursing, because when you are asked a question, the question is not going to be like uh, 2 plus 2 equal 4. Because you don't have to really think about that in the sense that because you that's something that you've had all your life from kindergarten going forward almost. So it's pretty much natural to you. That's that you've been doing that for quite some time. But now, like we mentioned about a new car and a used car, the reason that you will have to decide on whether or not you want a new car or a used car, you're going to have to think about that because you're going to be, first of all, you're going to be saying, can I afford a new car? I want a new car, but is it time for me to get the new car right now? Can I use the used car? Can I purchase a used car? And would a used car give me the benefit of what I need to do right now? So in a critical situation, or in any situation dealing with a patient, you're going to have to think about it in your head. But when you think about it, what you're going to be basing it on is evidence. What did the evidence tell me to do in this situation? What is the best practice to do in this situation? The best practice is going to be based on knowledge. You're going to bring some of your own knowledge from there, but your priority, foremost, first and foremost, is going to be based on scientific data and what they told you to do according to your textbook and what you have learned concerning nursing. Okay, critical thinking is also flexible, non-judgmental, inquisitive, honest, and interested in seeking the truth. They possess intellectual skills that allow them to use their own curiosity to their advantage. They have critical attitudes that motivate them to use those skills responsible. So you have critical thinking skills. So those skills in critical thinking refer to the cognitive, intellectual, process used in complex thinking operation such as problem solving and decision making when planning nursing care nurses gather information about the client and then draw tentative conclusion about the meaning of the information to identify the client's problem then they think of several different actions that might take to help solve or relieve that problem. Now, like I mentioned before, it's going to be based on evidence practice. But you're going to gather information from the individual. So this individual is going to come about during the nursing process and then and during your interview with the, the patient okay we have gone over critical thinking i mentioned that it was a combination of reasonable thinking openness to alternate ability to reflect and a desire to seek the truth okay so here's a, a question the most correct definition of critical thinking. So if you read each uh, example statement, A, B, C, or D, so what would your interpretation, what would you choose as the correct answer for this question?
Okay, so if your correct answer was C, uh, then you were correct. Okay, critical thinking skills. I talked a little bit about that. Objectively gathering information on the problem or end of issue, recognizing the need for more information. Evaluating, recognizing gaps, listening carefully, separating relevant from irrelevant, from irrelevant data, and important from unimportant data. Now that's going to be, um, that's very important because you real you really need to know what is the meat of the substance that you are trying to do and, and gather that you really would be keying in on what you would need to look for and all in order to come up with the correct solution or the correct answer and then you want to make sure that you organize a group of information in a meaningful way and that's like a systemic a systematic uh, way of doing things. So you're going to make inference. We'll talk about cues and inference a little later on. You're going to visualize potential, explore advantage, evaluate the credibility and use of the source of information. And like I mentioned earlier, that your uh, when you evaluate something, it's going to be evaluated on uh, evidence-based practice. You're going to recognize the different similarities among things or situation. And then above all, whatever is priority, that's what you would need to do. So these are different attitudes that you will bring um, that you will bring as as it relates to critical thinking attitudes, autonomy, curiosity. Humility, empathy, courage, perseverance, fair minds, integrity, confidence, and reasoning. And all of these are related to you being able to um, put together what you really is going to be doing in a particular situation. So complex thinking processes. So as a in as skills for uh, critical thinking. You're going to have to be able to problem solve. You're going to have to be able to make decisions. You're going to have to be able to make clinical reasoning and clinical judgment. All these, all these are critical thinking skills that make you, uh, enable you to be successful in coming up with uh, the correct measures and intervention, as we call it. For being a nurse. Why is critical thinking important for nurses? Because of different situations. Uh, you apply that knowledge in a holistic care, which means you know you you can't just look at an individual as uh, as just being a part. Like you can't look at the head and not include the person's chest and legs and feet, all this, unless you just a focus, you need to look at this because it could play into part of what's going on with the patient. You need to take into consideration even the patient diet, the patient culture, the patient religion. I mean, what nationality? I mean, you would have to know all of this. And remember nursing as an applied discipline, which means you have to apply the knowledge that you have gained. And you're gonna pull this knowledge from other fields. That's why you had to go to pre-nursing before you came into nursing, because skills like your math, your English, your sciences, especially anatomy, physiology, and microbiology, you will use these to come up with a with a this would be part of your intervention techniques. You will bring the knowledge from those areas to be able to make sound judgments and uh, link that to evidence-based practice. So a nurse who is newly employed at a hospital, of course, in a standard of patient care that does not seem to follow evidence-based practice. 
Which critical thinking attitude is the nurse demonstrating? So now this will require you, so since they're not using evidence-based practice, what attitude uh, are they looking at? So critical thinkers are not afraid to question things. They do not proceed with a questionable action simply because that's the way it's always been done. So we see is intellectual autonomy. We have a critical thinking model. It's um you can look at it more in the back of the book. But this is just a model. It's not an all-inclusive model, uh, but it is a model to help you think about. Uh, when you use your critical thinking skills. Uh, this model is sort of just organized critical thinking into five categories. But like I said, it's not meant to be all inclusive. You can use it as a guide when facing with clinical decision, an unfamiliar situation. It just can help you to achieve good outcome for your patients. <clears throat> Okay, we talked about the different kinds of nursing knowledge that you're going to bring uh, when you get ready to make your decision. Okay, so you have knowledge that you have learned. You have theory, theor theoretical knowledge. That's information based on some facts, principles, and evidence-based theories in nursing and related discipline, like I mentioned earlier. So this could be like physiology. Physiology, physiology, psychology, and so forth. It can include research findings, uh, constructive explanations of phenomena. This is the type of knowledge you would use to describe your patient, understanding their health status, rationalize which intervention you you choose and it allows you to predict the patient response to intervention and treatment okay then you have practical knowledge that's knowing what to do and how to do it it consists of a process such as the decision process and the nursing process and procedures such as how to give an injection take a blood pressure temperature and it is an expect and it is an aspect of nursing expertise so practical knowledge is knowing what to do and how to do it then you have self knowledge that's to think critically you must be aware of your beliefs your values and cultural and religious biases. You can gain self-knowledge by developing personal awareness, by reflecting, asking yourself, why did I do that? Or how did I come to think of that? That's drawn from your self-knowledge. And then you have an ethical knowledge. Ethical knowledge consists of information about moral principles and processes for making moral decisions. Ethical knowledge helps you to fulfill your ethical obligation to patients and colleagues, and that's very important. What is the nursing process? The nursing process gives us a definition of a systemic as a systemic problem solving process that guides all nursing action this is something uh we're going to talk about in chapter three through eight you will need to get those chapters down pack and really get a good understanding how that process works 
uh, the purpose of the nursing process is to help the nurse provide goal-directed client-centered care. The nursing process is assessment and evaluation. Everything you know about the patient, including the context, planning, and implement, implementation, what you do for the patient. Characteristics of a nursing process is useful in many settings. Goal-directed and client-centered involve both thinking and doing. Not linear, but rather a cyclical process. So it's a cycle. Steps may be concurrent, which means you probably can use the same step. You would use the steps in a in an order. You have the nursing process we call ADPI, A-D-P-I-E is the acronym that we use. So when you, so those steps are concurrent. You have to do an assessment, which is the A part. The D part is diagnosing after you accept, after you do your assessment, you're gonna determine what is the problem, what is going on that is considered your nursing diagnosis. So you got the AD, then you have the P. The P is planning. What do I do? What am I planning to do with the knowledge that I have gained the information from assessing? And then after I assess, I gave it a diagnosis. So I saw this person lying in the street. I'm going to assess the situation. Okay, as I assess the situation, I see that there's some blood on the ground. And it's a large amount of blood. So we have in our book, uh, uh, you have a nursing diagnose book that gives you a list of nursing diagnosis that is NANDA guidelines. These are called these are guidelines and nursing diagnoses that are written for nurses to use as a diagnosis after they assess the situation, after you're doing a complete assessment. And we're going to talk about in a minute what's all involved in an assessment when we get to assessment. So after you assess it, then you diagnose it, you give it a reason as to what you think it is. So they are bleeding. Uh, so you diagnose, you see the blood, and you know they have a loss of blood. So AD, then add pi P. So what you're going to do about the blood that you're seeing down there? Is the patient uh, breathing? Is the patient, uh, does the patient have a pulse? Uh, is the patient able to communicate with you? Is the, is the patient after you assess and, and, and see if they able to move. Okay, these are all things that you're gonna be doing hurriedly. Okay, so P, after you diagnose uh, AD, the P is the plan. What do you plan to do about it? I, after you plan to do what you're gonna do, are you gonna actually do it? You may be planning to get them up, but if they tell you after your assessment and all, and you reach down to get them up and they say, oh, no, I, I'm in too much pain. I can't move my leg. I can't move my leg. I can't move. And I can't hardly breathe. Okay, so at that point, are you going to be concerned about their breathing? Or are you going to be concerned about their pain and them moving their leg? So this is part of implementation. Your plan may have been to get them up or move them over, but you were not able to do that. So you were not able to implement what you plan to do. So you might've implemented uh, something else, 
Because at that moment, you will, if they told you that they could not move and they were in pain and they couldn't breathe, well, you're not going to get them up right now. You're going to try to assist their breathing because this is part of critical thinking because it's most important for them to be able to breathe. Safety is a priority, but their airway, they got to be able to breathe first. Because if you if they're not breathing, you can't do anything about that breathe. It doesn't matter whether they have pain or not. So that's the implementation part right there. Because everything you plan to do, you may not be able to implement. It because it may be something there to stop you from being able to implement. It. Because you got then you're gonna have to reassess it. Uh, and know what to do at that particular time. So you have your A, you have your D, you have your P, you have your I, and then you have your E, which is evaluating uh, the situation. You quickly have done that, you're gonna evaluate it because once you get them to breathing and making sure that their breathing is okay, then at that moment, you can go back to your planning and then, uh, decide that you're going to get them up and move them to more of a safe uh, area. So it's, it's a process that you go through. Like I said, that process is ADPI. When we go over that in the next couple of chapters, it's going to be, just as I told you, ADPI. Assessment, diagnose, plan, intervention, and evaluation. So it's done in that order concurrent. So we, I just went over the phases of the nursing process, uh, assessment, diagnose, planning, planning outcomes, planning intervention, implementation, and evaluation. What are the phases of the nursing process? I mentioned that assessment is where you gather all your data. We're going to go more into details when we get into the chapter three. Diagnosis is the second phase. You identify the client's health need. This diagnosis you can get from your, based on your assessment findings from your Nano Nursing Care Plan book. And there are also some threaded throughout your books. And it gives you, depending on what, uh, what we are talking about and what we're discussing at that time, it will have nursing diagnosis related to that. Okay, the planning outcomes decide goals you want to achieve with your nursing activities. Planning intervention, you choose intervention to help the client achieve the stated goal. Because like I mentioned before, one of your planning outcomes would be that you need to, you want to stop the bleeding. You want to find out where that, where that blood is coming from and uh, you're gonna either hold, you know, you're gonna hold pressure and put something over because you want to stop the the loss of blood. But you also critical thinking. You also gotta be mindful that the patient is having breathing problems. So your mind is gonna be on the patient breathing, but it's also gonna be on the fact that you need to stop the bleeding if they are continuing to bleed. So you're gonna have to multitask and be thinking at the same time, what, what do I need to do? How many hands do I have? Do I need some help? Okay, implementation, the action phase. When you carry out a delicate ac actions, you previously planned it. And like I mentioned before, uh, your implementation is what you actually carry out. Now, you may not be able to do it all, but then you can, what you can do, then you can delegate some to someone else because if you have some help with you, someone can make, could be assessing the patient breathing, their respiratory status and making sure that they have a pulse. And at the other end, you can make sure that you're trying to stop the bleeding and help. So you can uh, delegate. But if you're alone and by yourself, you're going to have to make a decision of what is most important, what is occurring at that time. So the final phase is you judge whether your action has successfully treated or prevented the client's health problem. And prayerfully, it's a good outcome. So we can see that the nursing process is related to critical thinking. 
Critical thinking and the nursing process are interrelated but not identical. Nursing decisions that require critical thinking may not be related to the nursing process. Some nursing activities do not require reflective critical thinking, although they must be done skillfully. And in order for them to be done skillfully, you would be doing them based on what evidence shows that this was uh, the correct technique that I followed in order for the, uh, to make the situation as a more positive outcome. So caring, caring is also a part of, um, of a nursing, the nursing role. Caring is always specific and re relational for each nurse and person encounter. Now that's based on your situation and who you are. It's not abstract. Caring involves thinking and acting in ways that preserve human dignity and humanity. And you can, can say, you know, you would like to be treat, you would treat someone how you would like to be treated. A caring nurse is active in preventing and relieving pain, the ability to apply knowledge of pain, causes and pain intervention, as well as to assess pain levels, allow the nurse to be effective in providing pain relief measures, applying theoretical knowledge to a specific patient situation is a critical thinking skill. All these are aspects of caring. And that is part of the of a nurse to be caring. You cannot be a nurse if you don't care. Uh, well, I would say you can't be an effective nurse without having a compassionate and a desire to care for others. So caring is always an uh, important. Okay, so the rest of the, okay, I mentioned about the caring. Okay, components of caring, knowing, being with, doing for, enabling, and maintaining a belief. So that's like coming from one perspective. We talk about the full spectrum nurses. Nursing, and when we say a full spectrum nursing, we saying that that's a unique blend of thinking, doing, and caring. So we talked about the thinking part, the critical thinking. We talked about the doing part involving the nursing process. But you also we just mentioned about the caring part, and uh, you can look more uh, onto your books, your textbooks about the model concept. So if you have any doubt about what you think thinking may be or what we've do, gone over doing or caring, you can uh, look when you're reading, make sure you uh, look at that. So this is just a model telling you um, that the thinking, doing, and caring concern a patient situation will determine the patient outcome. So we know that the model works in thinking, comes up on the critical thinking, theoretical knowledge. The doing would be up on the practical knowledge and the nursing process. Caring is based on your self-knowledge and ethical knowledge. We talked about all of this. And the patient situation would be based on the patient data, patient preference, and context. So once you assess the situation and you assess the patient and gain knowledge and all, the patient situation will also have an effect on uh, how you, their career is. So college courses such as microbiology and human growth and development presents content that is considered part of theoretical nursing knowledge. Would you base microbiology and human growth and develop on theory uh, would a human group would you consider that true or false? 
The knowledge gained in these courses help the nurse develop a more holistic and complete plan of patient care. Okay. This ends um, my audio lecture for critical thinking, uh, chapter two.